will not do. Even though it is Torah. And then we pick out a Torah what we will do. And feel satisfied. See, you moving on your own now. Hello, somebody. I haven't even given you a scripture yet. The Father told me to talk to you first. See, you're moving on your own. Sometimes I get a phone call. Uh, where are you? Oh, I'm, I'm in Texas. I didn't even know you were going to Texas. But well, brother, that's my business. No, then I'm supposed to be your pastor who prays for you every day. But I didn't know you was in the dangerous highways. So I feel neglected that you didn't take the time to say pray for me. Know what I mean? I'll pray for myself. I know him just like you. Okay, Miriam. He speaks to you just like he speaks to me. Okay, Miriam. And you know what happened, Miriam. But if you want to keep your little business to yourself, go ahead. But if I were you, I would seek prayer. That my way is protected. That the person the Father put in front of me is saying, well, I know where they are. Isn't that right? Before this brother went to Maryland, you know, Mary Lane. Before he went to Mary Lane, I got a phone call. Come on down. I'm going to Maryland today. I prayed. They went to Mary Lane and came back safely. Yeah. Bad weather and all. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring to us. But we, how can we do what Minister Johnson said this morning? Pray for one another and don't know anything about one another. How can we lift up the burdens of one another? How can we undergird one another? How, how can we just take care of one another and we are acting like strangers to one another? Who do we think we are? We are the yellow bean. We are the children of the most high. And we need to start acting like it. But you're moving out on your own. Like you're grown. That's why John said in 1 John chapter 2, verse number 1, my little children. He was talking to grown folk. In age. But in spirit, they were babes. Paul said, I couldn't talk to you as mature. You're still babies in the Messiah. And I'm looking at babes today. I'm a baby. I'm a child of the most high. But I'm growing. Hallelujah. I'm not stagnated. I'm growing now. And the Father's calling us to come together. Because he is about to do something that we're going to really need one another. We can keep playing with this thing if we want to. And you're on your own when you don't follow him. When you walk from under the protection of his umbrella, there is nothing to stop hell from breaking loose on you. And we keep on playing until you don't get burnt in the fire. And I'm not looking for anybody to get burnt. Uh, he gave me a little something here to write down. Let me read it to you. He said, it is very obvious that most of the world today, and yes, the assemblies, are moving in a presumptuous manner while thinking that all is well with the Father. Or they think because they're here on the Sabbath, everything is okay. No, it's not okay. You can be here on the Sabbath in your body, but your mind is somewhere else. So that means you're still not in his presence. That's why you leave here and don't feel anything. Because you will shut off for this, but open to something else. Wherever your mind is, that's where you moved to that day. And you was in oblivion somewhere, trying to pray like, and then when everybody clapped, it scares the hell out of you. Because you weren't here to understand why they clapped. But you... Or they jump up and scream, hallelujah! And you don't know... I did that one, one Sabbath and that young man that he is, he almost jumped about his seat and run. Yeah. 
I didn't want you to see him. I just pointed at him. <laughs> we got to understand the Father is trying yes, yes. to tell you something. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. See, people don't take that song seriously. Yah is trying to tell you something. Yes. Right and he's using my mouth. Johnson's mouth, Ray's mouth, Jerry's mouth, Stanley's mouth, White Blackwell's mouth, Roland's mouth, and he's trying to tell you time is running out. Yeah. It's getting ready time. It's time for a change. I preached not too long ago, it's time for a revival. We need to be revived. Brother Johnson used the word this morning, restored, but it's the same thing. We need to come from the old us and come to the new us. Because time is running out. We got, we, we, we've been living on our own for too long. We think it's okay. Just the movement we want to move. Do what we want to do without consultation. But there's safety in the multitude of counselors. If you're not seeking counsel, you're saying, I got this. I know what to do. Uh, I hate to get on this subject, but sometimes, you know, we get hooked up with the wrong mate because we moved too presumptuously. It was fine. Good looking. Right kind of hair. Right job. Drove the right kind of car. Had that smooth conversation. Just make you feel like you're rising up off the sofa when they talk to you. <laughs> Woo! Just feel good. I love that man. And then that man looked at that cold, cold shit. Beautiful smile. Long weave. <laughs> talk so sweet. Her voice sounds like honey and tastes like strawberries with plenty of sugar on it. It's like a moonshine. Like a moonshine. Get you drunk just being around that girl. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then we get hooked up with him and find out. Wrong problem. It wasn't no moonshine. It was vinegar. It wasn't no Mr. Hulk. It was Mr. I'll jump on you and beat your head if you don't do what I tell you. But then it's too late. You got hooked up to him. Why? Because you moved so presumptuously. Instead of getting much counsel, instead of you spending much time evaluating that person, Somebody told me one time, Brother Jerry, they said, oh, I love her. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, really? Really? Huh? Is she okay? Oh, yeah, she's good all the time. I said, have you made her mad yet? No. I said, well, make her mad and come talk to her. <laughs> you don't know her yet. When she get mad, you're going to find out. What you got? When that woman talked to me, oh yeah, he's this and he's all that. I said, did he ever give you any money to hold for Yeah. Did you spend it? No. Well, go spend it. <laughs> then you're going to find out what he made out of it. <laughs> when he looked for his stash, and it's gone. Yeah. All right, man. Wow. See, we don't spend time like that to find out about these people that we're hooking up to. Ahead, but in the long run, you start finding out it wasn't what you thought. It wasn't what it looked like. It looked good, but it wasn't good. Right, it felt good, but it, it wasn't good. Right, and you get tied up to that. Now you hooked up to it, and you can't get away because you made some vows. Right. Right. And you made a vow that said, sickness and in hell. Good or bad. Ups and bad. Richer or poor. You made the vow. And that vow is going to be kept, or else you're going to suffer. Because when you lie to him, you don't know who you're lying to. But he said, a liar will not tell in his sight. That's what he said. 
And then he made it clear in Revelation 21 8, all of us are going to have that part in the lake of fire that burns the sulfur. He's not playing. We're the ones playing the game. We're being great pretenders. We sit in here, we look like his people. We even act like his people. But we won't do what he said. We do what we want. Nothing but hypocrites. Well, has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites? Speaking one thing with your lips, but your heart is far from it. Isaiah told him, in vain do you worship. Go to church all you want. You can quote scripture backwards and forwards, up and down, any kind of way, and you still don't go to hell and burn in that fire because you're not doing what the word said. You know the world, but you haven't fallen in love with it. Because they love not the truth. That they might be saved. If you love the truth, you're going to do more than what you're doing. I'm talking to somebody. I know I ain't talking to nobody. And I might be talking to just anybody, but I'm hoping I'm talking to everybody. Hallelujah. The shoe might be tight, but it's right. If you got corners, just say ouch. What is the definition of presumptuous? The word presumptuous means overstepping your bounds, taking liberties boldly. You know, do what you want to do boldly. Familiar, forward, free, immodest, no modesty at all, over familiar, presuming it to be okay. That's presumptuous. Y'all got that? When you look at the word presumptuous in the Hebrew context, it means they're coming away to the door. I'm going to say it again. A coming away to the door. In other words, he is the, who is the door? Who? Yeah, Yahshua. Yahshua is the door. Yes. It's something that's coming you away from the door so you can't get to the door. That's us being presumptuous. It cuts you away from the pattern that leads you to the door and you got to come through the door to get to the Father. Right. Come on now. But something is getting between you and the door. Oh, yeah. And it's making you unable oh, yeah. to get into the Father's presence. Oh, yeah. That, and I notice I'm not trying to look at one individual, I'm just standing in the room. They call in the, in the movie projection, they call that panning. I'm panning the room. I'm trying to make you understand I'm talking to everybody. We allow it too much to come between us and the one who can save us. Yeah. And we sit down and we think that we got it made because we feel that little ignorant of a spirit when somebody sings a song. Well, that's the one that means something to you. But everybody else singing it don't mean nothing to you. And then when the preacher get up, if it ain't the right preacher you want to hear, you don't feel good about hearing the word that you're supposed to be in love with. Right, yeah. Come on, brother. Tell the truth. don't play the kind of music you like because you like the perfection of the music. Well, go get one. Help us out. They want about $60 a service. If that, 